Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to focus on eccentricity of an ellipse. By definition, eccentricity of an ellipse refers to how flat or round the shape of the ellipse is. Mathematically, eccentricity is the ratio of the distance from the center to the foci, which we usually represent that as letter C, and the distance from the center to the vertices, which we usually represent that as letter A. Now we remember that if eccentricity is equal to zero, then the conic section is a circle. On the other hand, if the eccentricity is greater than zero or less than one, we are able to come up with an ellipse. We also remember that if the E value is closer to zero, then the ellipse tends to be more circular in shape. On the other hand, if the E value is closer to 1, then it is more oval or elongated. Now let's look at the eccentricity formula of an ellipse. You will see the two cases of an ellipse, the horizontal and the vertical ellipse. Now we remember that the distance from the center all the way to the focus is represented as letter C and the distance from the center to the vertex is represented as letter A. On the other hand, if we get a vertical ellipse, it's pretty much the same thing. The distance from the focus to the center is represented as letter C, and the distance from the vertex to the center is represented as letter A. Again, mathematically, eccentricity is the ratio of the distance from the center to the foci, which is represented as letter C, and the distance from the center to the vertices, represented as letter A. We can therefore write the equation of eccentricity as E is equal to C over A. So this is the formula for the eccentricity of an ellipse eccentricity is equal to C over A. Now let's look at some examples. Now let's go over this example here. Determine the eccentricity of the given ellipse below. So this is an equation of an ellipse. So we remember that for an ellipse, our value for A is always greater than B. In this case right here, the two denominators are 25 and 9. So 25 is bigger than 9. So we can go ahead and say that our A squared is equal to 25. So that solving for A, our A is actually plus minus 5. On the other hand, our B here is equal to, that's B squared is equal to 9. So then we can go ahead and say that our B is plus minus 3. So we already have a value for A and B. Now we remember that we need the C in order that we can determine for the eccentricity so that we can go ahead and solve for C on, the, on this side right here. So we remember that the formula for C of an ellipse is C squared is equal to A squared minus B squared. So then we plug the values in. So our A squared is 25. So we put in 25 and that's minus the B squared is 9. So C squared is actually equal to 16. So solving for C, that is actually the square root of 16. So I'm just going to put this uh, radical sign right there. So then we go ahead and say that our C value then is plus minus 4 so that we can go ahead and compute for the eccentricity from here. Again, the formula for eccentricity is E equals C over A. So then we plug the values in. So our C value is 4 over our A value is 5. So if we um, divide that, we are able to come up with 0 0.8. So the value for eccentricity here is for this um, given ellipse is 0 0.8. Now let's move on to the next example. At this time, I would encourage you to pause this video and try this problem out on your own. And when you're done, unpause it and check your answer. 
Okay, so we go over the problem here. So again, we always remember that our A value is always greater than the B value for an ellipse so that we can go ahead and say that our A squared is 16 and our B squared is four. So I'm just gonna go ahead and write it down here. Okay, once we have the value for A and B, let's determine the value for C because we need that in determining the eccentricity of an ellipse. So I'm gonna show the work for um, determining the C up here. Okay, so our value for C is two square root of three. And so we can, or square root of 12, that should be fine. Any of those should be okay. Now we are going to determine the eccentricity of the ellipse. So that's E is equal to C over A. Our C value is two square root of three over our A value is four. So then we go ahead and say that the eccentricity value here is, if we divide these two, that is square root of three over two, or approximately that would be 0 0.866 and the six repeat. So this is the eccentricity of this um, given equation of the ellipse up there. Did you get the same answer as this? Good, perfect. Now let's move on to the next example. So we go over this word problem here. The earth moves in an elliptic orbit about the sun with the sun at one focus. The least and greatest distances of the earth from the sun are 91,446,000 miles and 94,560,000 miles respectively. What is the eccentricity of the ellipse and how long are the major and the minor axis? So we are going to draw this um, figure to better understand how we can solve for the eccentricity of this. Okay, so these are the given values here. So the distance from the sun if the earth was nearest the sun is 91,446,000 miles. When it is far from the sun, which is at this point right here, which is 94,560,000. We are supposed to solve for C. C is the distance from the center to the sun. So in order that we can do that, we are supposed to solve for the length of the major axis. So the length of the major axis is from one vertex to the other vertex right here. We will label this as our 2a so that's twice the measure of a and so we can go ahead and say that the distance from the vertex all the way to the um, center right here is our value for a we need both the value for a and c in order that we can solve for the eccentricity so that we can go ahead and say that our 2a, so this value right here from one vertex to the other, is the sum of these two values because they're, they're like connected. So from the center, I mean from the vertex to the focus where the sun is, we add it to the distance from the sun all the way to the nearest point of the earth from the sun so that we can go ahead and say that our 2a is actually the sum of these two values. I'm just gonna go ahead and show the work up here. Okay, so doing the math, our value for A here is 93,003,000. So I'm just gonna go ahead and write that up here. So that's 93,003,000 um, miles. That is our value for a, so I'll label this as A right here. And so we are supposed to, again, solve for C. In order that we can solve for C, that is actually the difference between our value for A, subtract it with the value of the nearest point of the Earth from the Sun. Notice that we already have a value for A, and C. These are the two quantities that we need in order that we can determine the 
eccentricity of an ellipse so that we can go ahead and solve for the eccentricity. The formula for eccentricity again is E equals C over A. So then I am going to plug in the value of A and C into the formula. Okay, so the eccentricity value is 0 0.0167. Now, we are asked to determine the length of the major axis and the minor axis. So we remember just by looking at this uh, picture that we have here, our major axis is the distance from the vertex to the other vertex. And that represents the uh, 2A. So major axis is equal to 2A. So I'm just going to go ahead and write that up here. So that is equal to 2A. And so our value for 2A is this value right here. That's 186,006,000. So I'm just going to go ahead and write that up here. Okay, so this is the value for the major axis. To determine the minor axis, we are going to use the equation C squared is equal to A squared minus b squared and remember the a is this value right here and we also have a c value which is this value right here and we are supposed to solve for the b so then we can go ahead and show the work um, down here so this is our value for b since our B is only this length right here so that we can go ahead and say that the minor axis is actually equal to 2B. So I'm just going to write that down here. So this is the value for the minor axis. That's it. If you find this video helpful, hit like and subscribe for more math videos. See ya!